1972 foi o primeiro ano europeu da conservação da natureza. 1972 was the first European year for nature conservation. It was the year when the National Park of Jerez was created. From my professional perspective, it was a very important year. I had the opportunity to meet several foreign scientists that came to the park, invited by its first director, La Grifa Mendes. One of those scientists, who became a very good friend of mine, was David Klein, director of the Department of Ecology of the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. And one day, on the top of a mountain in Jerez, I made the comment that it was a pity that the shepherds were burning too much. He stopped and asked me, too much? How do you know that it's too much? I have to introduce you to a friend who founded a new science, fire ecology. The friend of David Klein and founder of the science of fire ecology in the US was Edwin Komarek who visited the National Park in 1976 with his wife Betty, where they were shown how to observe the beneficial effects of low-intensity fires. To speak about prescribed fire in Portugal is to speak about the Comorex. When they first came to Portugal in 1976, invited by the forest services because of the increasing number of wildfires in alpine forests, I had the chance to meet them. I brought them from Braganza to the National Park where I was the director and we started the first prescribed fire experiments. I started the experiments at the National Park on the site of Pedra Bela, always very cautiously because we'd never seen prescribed fires before. We were only guided by their recommendations. We did a number of experiments throughout the country, in Vila Real, in Coimbra, in Marinha Grande. Another of the first locations where prescribed fire was experimented was Tapada de Mafra, close to Lisbon, which David Klein visited in 1975 and Ed and Betty Komarek in 1976. They all suggested that this was the place to establish a research station for the study of plant and wildlife ecology, and particularly of fire ecology, similar to the Tall Timbers Research Station in Florida. Tapada de Mafra, where we are, is a place with a very interesting history in the reintroduction of prescribed fire in Portugal. As a student, I had the unique opportunity of participating in one of those first experiments made by João Bagalho. This experiment was very influential in my forestry education, also because I understood that in other countries, as in the USA, this practice was already commonly used by the forest services. The Tapada de Mafra was created as an enclosure to serve as a hunting estate for the king, next to the monastery and palace built at the beginning of the 18th century by order of King John V, and paid for with gold from Brazil. Mm -hmm. 
near the beginning of the 19th century, the German Frederico van Hagen, specialist in mine engineering and natural sciences, was invited to Portugal. In 1807, van Hagen followed the royal family to Brazil, when the capital of the Portuguese Empire moved to Rio de Janeiro. He directed the Royal Iron Factory of Ipanema, in which iron was first produced in the American continent. Van Hagen then followed the return of King John VI to Portugal in 1821. He was nominated in 1824 the first general manager of forests of the kingdom. And the use of prescribed fire as a tool to prevent summer wildfires in pine forests is referred to for the first time in Portugal, and probably in the world, precisely by Van Hagen, from his experiences in the pine forests of Liria, published in a document dated 1836. I have observed that after a pine forest is 20 years of age, there is a safe way to prevent it from burning in a summer wildfire. It is to set fire in dry winter days to the litter that is on the floor beneath the pines, as fire will burn the litter without damaging the roots of the pine trees. And by repeating this operation every winter in pine forests which are older than 20 years, there is no risk of losing the forest through a summer wildfire, when fire attacks the roots of the pine trees and kills them. It is known that to carry out this operation without risk, the pine forest should not have any tall shrubs in the understory. This burning should be done only with the right wind and by setting the fire against the wind. This wind must not be too strong. About 150 years after the work of Van Hagen, José Moreira da Silva very cautiously began his prescribed fire program in Porto. He always used to say that before lighting the first match, he would ask for scientific support from the university in Villa Real, the close cooperation of Teresa Cabral in Lisbon, and the University of Idaho through Steve Bunting. However, in spite of many successful experiments, not everybody was willing to accept the idea of prescribed fire. There was a lot of resistance from my colleagues to the use of fire. They had difficulties in accepting the use of fire within the forest. Outside the forests, maybe, but within the forests, no. A prescribed fire in the forest was something that caused my colleagues much confusion and concern. And what we knew about the experience of shepherds and farmers were winter fires, which we called cool fires, but they were always done in treeless areas.
est plus facile de combattre. Mais il faut savoir comment faire. À la même date en France. At the same time in France, José Moreira da Silva joined us in the reintroduction of prescribed fire in the pine forests of the Massif des Morts in the Côte d'Azur, where we found similar resistance. It was really a reintroduction, because as in the case of the pine forest of Leiria in Portugal, the so-called small winter fire had already been used in the past on thousands of hectares. The director of the forests underlined the excellent results of the use of fire in prevention as well as the use of suppression fire against wildfires. Following his recommendations, Parliament approved a law making the use of fire official as good forest management practice. It was the year 1869. In 2006, the discussion about fire ecology and management gained a new international dimension through the European project Fire Paradox. And then he is protagonist. So there are some uh, little smoke uh, um, started lightning fires because they wanted. To, to see the policeman work. <laughs> <laughs> Fire Paradox associates European teams dedicated to various areas of research related to fire ecology and management, with teams from various countries such as Russia, Mongolia, Morocco, Tunisia, South Africa and Argentina, and advisors from Australia, Canada and the USA. Associated to this project, there is a different philosophy of addressing the problem of wildfires, resulting in what we call the paradox of fire. What is the paradox? We know that policies that try to deal with the problem of wildfires, focusing only or essentially on firefighting and trying to exclude fire, may have catastrophic results in the medium or long term. And there will be a tendency for the number of wildfires to increase in the future. When these policies do not consider fuel management, and when these policies are temporarily successful, fuel accumulation is increased, creating the potential for wildfires with more negative impacts in the future. After a series of large wildfires in 2003 and 2005 in Portugal, the importance of re-establishing a new balance between vegetation and fire became even more obvious. The recent program for the use of prescribed fire in the creation of fuel breaks is part of that permanent search for balance. We're at the top of Marão, a mountain that was one of the places selected as a priority for the use of prescribed fire in the period 2005 to 2006. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. 
preparar, o que se fala, estamos à conclusão. We worked here on this mountain of Meran, we worked on the mountain of Lausanne and in many other areas scattered all over the country in order to demonstrate the technique in many places. In Portugal, the preparation of technicians in the use of prescribed fire is the basis of a more specialized training, allowing the use of fire as a tool in suppressing wildfires. In some places where we have larger plots, we try to do some practical firefighting exercises, where we can start a fire and the teams will have to decide how they're going to fight the fire using only hand tools and suppression fire. This technique of using a fire front against the wildfire front gave excellent results in other countries that have been using this practice for some time. This is why we brought from those countries the experience, the know-how, the practice, and also during 2006, we even brought technicians to participate in the teams that were using suppression fire in more difficult situations that required its use. incêndios que requereram a utilização do contrafogo. Quero que você me regue e proteja estes homens que estão aqui dentro. Nada, Ricardo. Com o fogo não há limitações. It is really a very good tool. In Argentina, in the region where I come from, it's the most commonly used tool, and I'm sure that it's possible to apply it here. Fire was used in the Mediterranean region as a traditional technique for firefighting, but was largely forgotten by decades of dominance of the use of water. In recent years, the use of suppression fire has been receiving renewed interest in some countries, along with increased requirements in training and experience. No es 
de hoy para mañana que se pueden crear equipos. We can't create teams overnight. There are some people, but only a few can work with fire today. De momento pueden trabajar con ellos. With adequate training and experience, we can increase the number of teams, but always keeping in mind small teams, well trained, integrated in the network, and specialized. It's a question of specialization. We know that fire was always a good technique, but one which was not very easy to use. It is easy after you have the right know-how. We're now working in a legal and certified framework under supervision. By whom? By those that have the know-how. The secret's been discovered. We discovered the powder. Now we have to follow it up. So this was a radical change in the way we operated. For the better. For the better. After adequate training, foresters and firemen recognize the importance of the use of suppression fire in many situations. We had the opportunity of using the teams that the Forest Service has created several times in this year of 2006 with foresters and firemen. We used them especially in large wildfires in about a dozen situations throughout the country and with excellent results. In the following year, 2007, the excellent results continued. A good example was the use of fire in the suppression of a large wildfire in the region of the National Park of Jerez. As a result, fire is once again used in the park, now in the form of suppression fire. The philosophy of fire paradox in using fire for the suppression of wildfires is being put into practice and the various interventions have been documented for further analysis.
The National Park of Jerez is a good illustration of the constant interaction between vegetation and fire, where man is always a participant, by his action or by his absence, in prevention, management, and in firefighting. And this permanent search for balance continues in cycles, in space and in time. <laughs>